everybody, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim with our YouTube series that is called The Key Components of Revival. And I hope you've been enjoying uh, the last episodes or all the other episodes that you've been watching. Today on episode number four, I want to talk about counting the cost because revival is costly. In fact, anything when it comes to the things of God is costly. I don't want to do anything if it doesn't cost me anything. In the words of David, King David said, I will not give to the Lord what did not cost me something. It has to hurt. There has to be a sacrifice. I have to feel it. I don't know about you, but I don't want just this outward exterior uh, type of Christianity. I want to feel it. I need to feel it in my gut, the pain, the suffering. Apostle Paul says, I want to share in the fellowship of Christ's suffering. Most people want to share in the glory, the blessings, the benefits, the cars, the houses. But Apostle Paul says, I desire to share in the fellowship of Christ's suffering. Now that's another level. And that's what revival is. Revival is costly. Because let me tell you, it will cost you everything. I remember a number of years ago, we had an 11-day revival in Hesperia, California, which is in the Antelope Valley area, the high desert. We had an 11-day revival, and the power of God was so strong. People were getting healed. People were getting touched. And the words of knowledge was flowing so strong and so prophetically. But as we did that 11-day revival, the host pastors, uh, their children bought them these concert tickets to this exclusive concert, to this special person that they loved. And their children bought them this very special ticket and these seats. But I told these pastors, I said, I believe God wants us to extend this revival because there's a momentum. There's something supernatural happening. So can we stretch? Can we push? I feel like we will be in disobedience if we do not extend a little bit longer. And that pastor said, you know what? Let's pray about it. And guess what? Those pastors, they willingly gave up those costly, expensive, precious seats to that one-time concert that their beloved children gifted to them. Revival is costly because when revival comes, it comes many times suddenly. In the book of Acts chapter 2, the Word of God says, and suddenly there came winds of fire, tongues of fire, winds of change, and suddenly. Many times when revival comes, it messes up your schedule. When revival comes, it messes up your structure, your regular type of schedule and structured day in life. When revival comes, let me tell you, when we are in revival mode, literally we probably sleep at 3, 4 a.m. in the morning because we're leaving the church at 1 or 2 a.m. And then you sleep at 3, 4 a.m. and then you probably wake up, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 noon then that same day. And then you prepare for the evening revival services. Revival takes everything out of you. Revival pulls you. Revival stretches you. Your mentality, your phys physiologically, your emotions, your spirituality. Revival stretches you, just like a wineskin is stretched. Revival pushes the boundaries. It pushes the human capacity. It pushes the Christian norm. Revival pushes and stretches you so much that you have to die to yourself. Too many Christians are only used to being a Sunday church goer. When you go to church on Sunday, how many times do you, you, how many hours do you give to the Lord? One hour, two hours. Let me tell you, we are meant to live on earth as it is in heaven, which means revival season forever. Revival never ends. And when you are in a true revival, a true move of God, then you will be in a place where you're always in the glory, in the corporate glory, in the habitation of his presence. We're not just looking for a visitation, but we want a habitation. And there are greater realms of God's glory. But remember, when the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies, the high priest, one person once a year had to pay the price. And if he was not consecrated, set apart, sanctified, then he would be struck down 
dead. It pays a price. You have to pay a price to be in the glory of God. Not many people can go up and high. That's why we see many prophets, many prophetic people, because they've seen the glory of God. They've experienced the power of the presence at such monumental magnitude levels. Many of them, they were taken home. Many of them experienced premature death. They had Enoch type of experiences. Like a prophet, Kim Clement. He was a prophet way ahead of our time. I believe that he was taken up like Elijah, like Enoch, into the heavens, like John the Beloved, because he experienced, touched, lived in that realm so much. However, revival will cost you everything. But Jesus is worth it. The cross is everything. The word of God here says in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And Jesus said to all, if anyone would come after me, let them deny it themselves and take up the cross daily and follow me. Take up the cross daily. What does that look like? How heavy is that cross? Is that wooden cross burdensome? Is that wooden cross heavier, more taxing than what you know? Let me tell you, the heavier the cross, the heavier the glory. The crowns of thorns that was upon the head of Jesus was heavy. It was excruciating. It was painful. How heavy was the crown of thorns on the head of our King and our Savior? Because the crown of thorns was so heavy that it reversed the curse of the thorns and the thistles, the curse of labor and on the ground on planet Earth. Because the crown of thorns reverse that curse. That heaviness also portrayed or reflected into the heavy, glorious majesty of the crown of glory that Jesus himself and only him will be receiving. Jesus said, if you come up after me, let him deny himself. Deny your flesh. Deny your desire or your need to sleep. Deny your desire, your need for affections, human relationships. Desire, deny your need to be understood. Deny the need to have a regular human life. What is regular, by the way? Let me tell you, America's version of regular is carnal. Most Christians' perception of a regular is carnal. Going to church once or twice a week, if that's it to your Christian life, that is carnal, that is minimal, that is a travesty, and that is an error to the things of God. That is an insult to Jesus. Let me tell you, people of God, when you deny yourself, then you will truly live in the abundant life, which is revival. 24-7, day and night, night and day, and never stops. Yes, we're humans. We have human needs. We have physical needs. It's scientifically proven that if you don't eat or drink for X, Y, Z amount of days, then you will die. Because we are in a fallen world, and we are in creation. However, when you are in the glory, the presence of God, Watch your needs, your desires begin to shift, begin to stretch, and begin to be in the Lord alone, Christ alone. You will lack nothing when you are in the blood and the body of Jesus Christ, divine, holy communion. Revival is costly. It will cost you your reputation. It will cost you your schedule. It will cost you your friendships. You don't have a normal Christian life. People will begin to ridicule. Are you still doing that thing called revival? Are you still believing in this thing called revival? Why don't you just stop? Can't you just come to our anniversary dinner date? Honey, can't we just have a normal night with our kids again? Baby, can't you just let go of revival?
for one night, two nights, for a week, for a month. And can't we just have a normal family? Oh, the devil is a liar. It will cost you everything. That's why many ministers, men, women, and God, oh, Jesus, you need to pray for us. That's why there's so many divorces. That's why there's so much hidden sin. Family dysfunctions. That's why Apostle Paul says it's better for a man to not marry if he's a preacher of the gospel. Unless you cannot control your flesh. I believe in the power of marriage. I believe in the sanctity, the God commandment, ordination of the family unit and the marriage bed and what God has through family. However, I believe we need to pray against divorces amongst ministry couples. We need to pray for our pastors, pray for our leaders because it costs us everything. Being a minister of the gospel is different from every other secular occupation. Yes, you could be a psychologist, a lawyer. You could be a businessman, an entrepreneur. You could be a teacher. And you can do all these things in the secular realm or in the occupations unto God. Absolutely. It is also a holy, sanctified job. But being a minister of the gospel as your full-time occupation as a priest is totally different and it has different responsibilities. The Bible says in the New Testament, anybody who desires to be a bishop or an overseer, they must know that there are greater consequences before God. Let me tell you, revival is costly. It will cost you everything. I don't know about you, but I do not like McDonald's, especially after doing all the trans LGBTQ and all of the Harry Potter sorcery reading type of nonsense. I don't like eating McDonald's, but when you go to McDonald's for that level or for that price, you expect to get something. I enjoy, by the grace of God, fine dining, the atmosphere, the experience, the eclecticness of all of the different savory tastes, the presentation and the beauty of how it's served and presented. It's art. It's wonderful. It's an experience with God. So when you go to fast food or when you go to McDonald's, Burger King, you pay this price. Therefore, you are expecting to experience this. But when you go to Mastro's or Roy's or when you go to a fine dining Ruth Chris, when you go to these places, you're paying a higher ticket. But your experience level is expected to be here. When you are paying a price at Burger King, that's all you're going to get. But when you give it your all, when you give Jesus your everything, not 10%, not just your tithe, your 100%. When you give Jesus your everything, your mind, soul, will, emotion, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love God with everything, with all your heart, your being. And when you give Jesus your every second, your every minute, your every day, and your every week, your every, when you give God your life, God, will give you the expected return of the kingdom of rewards. My goodness. The higher the level you pay, the price you pay, the greater the expectation, the demand you can expect. People of God, revival's costly. Yes, there's fun to it. Yes, you have fun like children of God. But it's messy. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, where there is no oxen, the manger is clean. But where there are oxen, the harvest is plenty. What does that mean? That means when there's oxes or buffaloes, cows, you will have a great harvest. But if you want a clean, comfortable, convenient life, 
where you are in control and you have everything in this nice little picturesque hallmark picture the way you like it. You will have no harvest. Do you want a messy harvest or do you want clean with nothing? Revival's messy. Having a baby is messy. Giving birth to a child is messy. It's beautiful, glorious, yet it's messy. And sometimes it can scar people. <laughs> but having a beautiful baby is a beautiful mess. And that's what we are. We're also a beautiful mess, a beautiful creation in the process. Revival is costly. It'll cost you everything. Your time, your friendships, your reputation, a normal life, your fun activities. Yeah, give those things up too. It will cost you even your voice. Like my voice, it'll cost you your voice. Sometimes it taxes on your health. It costs you your money, all your finances. Jesus. It costs you everything. But when you give everything, then you will gain so much more. Can you be faithful? Can you be obedient? Can you follow Jesus and pursue him no matter what? Because he is worth it. Jesus is worthy of it all. Yes, we need balance. There's a healthy, holy balance. And thank God for great teachings today on self-care and, you know, and just how to take care of your soul and your body. But let me tell you, a lot of those things can also be humanistic and carnal and self-centered and narcissistic. You need to follow the word of God and obey the Lord. He is life. If eternal abundant life is not in him, it's not anywhere. People of God, it's Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. And I pray that you will pursue desire revival no matter what the cost. The Lord might say, I need you to fast. I need you to pray at this time of the middle of the night. I need you to say no to certain people. I need you to say no to certain actions, habits, and things because I have a higher call for you. I want to use you to a greater level because I want to give you more. So will you die to yourself? Deny your desires. Deny the earthly pleasures like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Can you deny so that you can step into the realm of revival? Revival's costly, but it is worth it because I would rather be in the will of God than just do what people think I should do. I would rather be in the glory of God, be in a move of God than do what I would nonchalantly do with the mundane, boring, regular, average things. You're not made for normal. You're made for abnormal, for extraordinary, for the supernatural. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here. And I pray that this episode today encouraged you to count the cost. Let's pay the price. Pay it forward. Yes, Jesus paid it all. But let us follow in his footsteps of being servants and being his children. God bless you. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here. Thank you for watching episode four. Count the cost of our series, the key components of revival. I hope this word today encouraged you, stirred you up to lead you to make the right decisions. Comment below what spoke to you the most. Hit the like, subscribe button. And thank you for being a friend and a follower of Ben Lim Ministries. God bless you.